guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. And if you're new here and visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I do lots of DIYs, trash to treasure, furniture flips with my husband Chris, and thrifty adventures to fit into the farmhouse Today's decor. video, I am bringing you three of my thrifted items and I am flipping them to fit into the farmhouse decor that I love. And so what I'm doing with these items is I sell here locally in a retail booth in the, in the an, local antique So I would mall. say that these are some rather unique pieces. One is a storage cabinet, one is a little china, you know, show off your little decorative pieces, and one's just a cute little shuttered mirror for wall decor. So they're all similar that they are in their wall decor and they were all under the seven dollar price range so as a reseller i could vision painting these up like i said they were all under seven dollars so the resell was there for these pieces and i absolutely love this little i could see somebody putting this in as a like a medicine cabinet in their bathroom just super sweet pieces so I start right off by removing any hinges that I can and on this <laughs> this decorative pieces these little hinges were so thin and it's such a small little screws that in the middle of the shutters I could not get those to remove. I could take them off the initial window but I could not get the ones off the shutter without stripping out the nails. So sometimes you just like I said you know I want to remove any hardware I can but not always do I get to remove the hardware. And I know not everybody is worried about the back pieces, but that's just part of what I do. I like to make sure that if I'm making a brand new piece for somebody, even though it's a thrifted item, I like to do the back too. And what I'm doing here is unscrewing these because they are all um, green in color. And I was hoping that I was going to be able to remove the mirrors, but once I started trying to remove that tape, I realized that the mirrors were six individual pieces and that they were glued in, so I wasn't going to be able to remove the mirrors. On this little shadow box, I am able to remove the mirror off the back of this. This is, will make it much cleaner. And this is actually plastic. It's not even a wood. So I'm very happy that, because I'm going to need to spray paint this piece, that I'm able to take the back and remove the mirror. And then I don't know if you like this vintage hardware or not. I absolutely do because I'm going to be painting these pieces white. This, this vintage hardware just stands out. So it's I could change it out. It's not cost efficient as a reseller to change it out. So if the hardware is nice, I will just give it a fresh coat of paint and continue on using it. But like I said, I like the vintage hardware. So then I noticed something shiny on one of the shelves so i thought it was just a piece of masking tape and then realized that all three shelves had clear contact paper on so actually it was quite stuck on there and i ended up getting my blow dryer just to heat up that sticky to get this contact paper to remove off these shelves now for this piece i just mixed up some durham water putty to use it as a wood filler this just had some of those knobbies where you could see crevices and all the nail holes that you don't really notice when it's the brown wood tone, but once I was going to paint it white, they would kind of stick out like they were a detail. So I'm just filling those in using this water putty. The nice thing about that is you just take a little bit of the dry powder and a little bit of water and just mix up what you need. And then I decided that these mirrors were just stuck in by these little, they're like a metal piece that you kind of hammer in. And at first I was just going to try to peel them up and try to remove the glass. And I was able to do that off the one, but the other one I could not get it them lifted. So I ended up just removing them all together. Then after that Durham water putty is good and set up, it's able to be sandable. So I'm just using my orbital sander to make sure that these, where I place that putty is nice and smooth. Now that I have all my pieces prepped, everything's, the, the hinges are all taken off, the glass is removed, anything's taped off that I needed to tape off. I'm now I'm just giving them a good cleaning with my crud cutter. This is my favorite go-to. It just really gets any grease and grime and just makes a wonderful prep surface for painting. 
So if you heard me say earlier in the video that this shadow box is plastic, so now that I've got it completely cleaned and it's completely dried, I have it flipped so it the face is down, the front of it is down, I'm going to get my most coverage doing that the first, and I'm just using the Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer and the Flat Black. I find that this attaches to this kind of material very well. So when I was assessing this to get this started to be painted, I decided that I was able to take the back off of this. And so I kind of had an idea what I wanted to do with the back. So I'm just taking my rubber mallet and kind of punching out those staples. And then on the bottom that somebody had used some very long nails. So I just needed to go back in with my hammer and pull those nails out. And then I'm able to go in after removing that back and giving this piece a better clean job. And man, if you wood is kind of hard to tell sometimes how dirty it is, but I will show you my rag how dirty this piece is. I know that I had that contact paper on and it was removing some of that sticky, but this piece was actually dirtier than it looked. So since I cannot remove the mirror on this, I needed to tape off these six individuals so I'm not just you can paint and scrape off. I don't want to take a chance of scraping the mirror, so I take the time to tape off. And I just, we just have that roll of paper that you buy from Menards that covers up our table. So I just cut off a piece of that, and that's what I'm using in the center. So now I'm just using my black onyx that I get off the shelf at Walmart. No mixing required, it just is right off the shelf. And so I'm just getting this little cupboard painted with its first coat of black paint because of the way that I'm going to distress I wanted to see a little bit of that black along with a little bit of the natural wood because then my finished product will be white. And I have to say that I cheated, used my resources. Since this had the shutters and it had all those little crevices, I have to say that I did use the Rust-Oleum spray paint on this. That was a kind of a rough wood, so I just thought that would be the best way to get it coveraged with my undercoat of black. So to seal this black paint in that I spray painted this, I'm using the polycrylic spray this is just going to help give that spray paint that black rust-oleum just a little bit more durability by sealing it with a top coat of polycrylic and then after the polycrylic dry, then i flip it over i just find if i do the polycrylic that i accidentally not uh, it just protects that paint enough so when i go to flip it and i'm trying to get my most coverage this is just what works out for me and then i'll go along the front and the face of it and then proceed to painting the rest of it with the rust-oleum and then after that's dry i'll do the same thing with the polycrylic and i'm not worried about that I'm respray painting the other because I'll be re polycrylicing it too. It just kind of gives an extra coverage, extra protection when I'm flipping the piece over. So here's where you can tell that I use the the Rust-Oleum spray paint. Just it just gets into those little crevices of these shutters a little bit better than trying to get in there with a brush because sometimes the brush will pull up on the sides. So now that my black paint is dry, I can go on with my top coat, which I am doing my Kills paint and primer in the flat white. Same like the black, I just get it right off the shelf at Walmart. And I love the way it's nice and smooth coverage. And you just paint until you think that you have enough coats to coverage. And white takes a little bit of coats to cover, so usually three to four coats. So for these pieces, I am just giving them one coat of my Rust-Oleum in the flat white. That'll just help so when I'm doing the slat part of the shutters that I'm not building up a whole bunch of paint in the corners. And this is just gonna give it a nice base of white. And then after I polycrylic the front of this shadow box, I can now flip it back upside down so that I'm getting the most coverage with my first coat. And I'm doing this with the Rust-Oleum flat white also and this is just going to be a base coat of white because I will be finishing it up with the Kills paint. So like I said the, the Rust-Oleum spray paint was just a base color for these pieces. Now I'm going back over it with my Kills paint and primer in the flat white. I just like this white better and I like how this sands especially on wooded pieces. So this was just a way that I wasn't pooling up a whole bunch of paint. Sometimes you know, paint will pool up when it's got all those slats. So this is just 
what I find works for me. You might have a different technique that works for you. This is just, I like to keep minimal products, so I just like to use what I have. And I'm using that same Kills paint on this little shadow box. Also, I just like the white color. Yes, white is not all created equal. I like the white color of this. And I like the, st the stability of the Rust-Oleum paint on this plastic piece, but I want this color white. So at least now all of my three pieces are at all being at least painted white now. After cleaning my hardware with some Dawn dish soap and some hot water and then letting them thoroughly dry, I'm just taking the Rust-Oleum paint and primer in one in the flat black and giving them a nice cleaned up coat. And then I'll finish it off with some polycrylic to protect that paint. So now all these pieces finally have all the coats of white that they need. I feel like everything is completely covered. And now I can proceed on to the next step of sanding. So I'm just going in with some 220 sandpaper and hand sanding on this piece. I'm just taking my the sharp edges where all the little edges are on this window piece and then I'm pushing hard to get down to that black paint. And if I wanted to even push harder, I could get into some of the natural. So around, it just depends on how hard you push your sandpaper, how much distressing you want. And then over the pieces I don't really want the flat edges, I will just lightly sand so that they are smooth to the touch. So I chose to keep the back of this piece black so what i'm doing now is removing the tape where i had taped off so i didn't have any drips but that paint kind of builds up where you've taped off and it gives you that hard crusty edge so i like to sand that off so it's nice and smooth i don't know if it would scrape anybody's walls but i just like that soft feeling and getting all that crusty paint removed so for this shadow box, I'm going to be distressing this also. And because I polycrylic it, that paint is on there nice and good. So I'm just going along the edges where I want it to be distressed. The same thing where I push a little bit harder. I don't really want that natural color showing through of this piece. So I will just gingerly go along and distress all the edges. Now for this cabinet, this is that wood that just really soaks in the paint. So I am using the orbital sander on this and what I'm doing is just taking a 220 sandpaper and I'm just smoothing out so it is nice and smooth. And then I'll kind of tip my orbital sander on the edges so it gets that distress. So this is going to be a little bit more distressed than the other pieces, but this was the look I was going for on this piece. Now for the sides of the doors, I don't really want to go in and have that orbital sander take all the paint off. So I'm just going to be taking the 220 and just hand sanding that so that's nice and smooth also. And though I could do the sides and the bottom with the orbital sander, I could not get the orbital sander. It was too tall to go into the shelf part of this. So I have to go in with the 220 sandpaper and hand sand that smooth and get the distressing that I'm looking for. So on the back of this piece, I did not tape off, but I still have that overrun area where it is nice and crusty <laughs> from the paint. So I was planning on anyway taking the orbital sander to make sure that those areas were nice and smooth. And especially along where I have to replace the backing on this, I want to make sure that it's going to be flush. So I'll need to sand off that what had pulled over on the back to make sure that that back of this piece will be nice and attached. You know, the, the paint will build up so it may not lay as flat as you want if I didn't remove it. So now I'm just using the assistance of the air compressor to get, oh my, me oh my, all that sand dusting off of these pieces. So I like to finish up my white paint pieces with Verithane finishing wax. I can only find this at the Home Depot. I don't know why, but this is just a wipe on and a wipe off. This, the paint I use, it does have a paint and primer in one. This is just an extra step to protecting that paint. So I'm re replacing those little pieces that keep that back on on this back of this window mirror. And I forgot to paint them, but that was okay because I wanted to flip them over and make it, they were a little bit loose, so flipping them over just showed a silver color. And so, and actually they curved in more to keep that back because it was kind of falling off when I 
um, took it off to begin with so this will make it so it's nice and secure they're just really kind of flimsy aluminum not really strong metal so this just kind of helps secure it a little bit better and now I get to replace all the hinges and all these little tiny screws that are on these pieces so the doorknob of these pieces were just wood they weren't screwed in or anything so I'm just using my star bond glue and just gluing the pegs back for the doorknobs so for the back of that cabinet, since I thought somebody probably will be using this in a bathroom, I thought just to freshen up that plain old brown particle board, I would put some of this Dollar Tree black and white contact paper on the back of this. So kind of like the other piece where the back was kind of wonky and falling off, that was the same with this also. It wasn't didn't really have enough staples, enough brad nails on it to hold it. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to make sure that it is nice and centered. And then I'm going to be taking a ruler and then I'm going to be finding those shelf pieces and running that across a straight line so I know where I can get a couple extra staples, extra nails in there to make sure that it's good and secure. And then now I'm just replacing all the hardware on this cabinet also. And I chose just because sometimes uh, my hands are kind of dropping not to put the mirror on until after I got the hardware attached. So now I just need to get these mirror pieces cleaned off. And I my go-to is Norwex cloth. I don't sell it. I just absolutely have used these for a good decade. And this is just the Enviro cloth where you just get it wet and it just cleans the glass beautifully. You wipe it off, get this all clean, and then you take the other dry glass cloth and it leaves it streak-free. It's no chemicals even needed. And then now that it's all cleaned, I can put it back on the back of this shadow box. And then re before replacing these two round mirrors also, I will do the same thing. I'll just get them their good cleaning with the Norwex cloth. Now when removing those metal spikes, I basically destroyed them and I don't have any more metal spikes. So what I'm doing here is I am just using my medium star bond glue and I'm just working it into the edges and then trying to wipe off any excess that so it does not pull out and be in the front of the mirror. And even though I'm pretty sure that that star bond glue will hold that nice and tight, I'm just going to do a bead of hot glue around the outer edges just to make sure that it has a nice clean look and that it is that mirror is in there nice and secure so on the bottom of this cabinet there was just a wee bit that i could not get the contact paper did not completely cover so i just ran a bead of the alex caulk on the bottom so you didn't see any of that particle board but i absolutely love how this cabinet turned out i love that little surprise of that contact paper in the inside and i think somebody will be very happy to have this in their bathroom And I don't know if you are a reseller watching these, but I have to say that when I update these shadow boxes, they really don't last very long in my booth. So even though this one was plastic, the Rust-Oleum stays adhered to it very well. And they may not sell like the first week you put it in, but they do sell. And when I saw this piece in Goodwill, I just knew that giving it a different color, fitting it into anybody's farmhouse decor, anybody's decor, just painting it white, it just a nice, nice, simple decor piece. I just love the edit of the shutters and who doesn't like a mirror? Thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think of my thrift flips? Are they items that you would have stayed away? Do I have you kind of taking a second gander on things? That is one of my hopes for my videos is that I kind of share what my vision of thrifted items and show you what you know what you can 
reconsider when you see these items when you're out and so about. So I thank you so much for watching today's video and don't forget to give me a quick comment of what was your favorite and don't forget to hit that thumbs up like button because that lets YouTube know that you like my kind of content. And again, if you're part of my YouTube family, thank you so much just you watching my videos just lets again youtube know that you like this kind of content and they will keep recommending me so and if you're new to my channel please consider hitting that con subscription button and then this, as always don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when i have uploaded a new video thanks again for watching